Hello and thank you for joining us on today's episode of DPR, the Petroleum Industry Regulator. Now, being the Petroleum Industry Regulator requires in-depth monitoring and enforcement of the rules and regulations of the 1969 Petroleum Industry Act as amended. Now, however, our focus today is on natural gas. Now, how rich is Nigeria in the subsector of petroleum industry? How does the Department of Petroleum Resources monitor and even regulate this natural resource? How adequate is the monitoring and regulation? Stay with me for the answers after our usual tidbit segment. For so many years now, Nigeria has had to spend billions of naira in foreign exchange on importation of petroleum products to cushion the shortfall of supply owing to the underperformance of its four major refineries at Kaduna, Wari, and Port Harcourt. However, the federal government has recently initiated new moves to revive the ailing refineries. The manager of crude oil marketing at the Niger National Petroleum Corporation NNPC Wari Zone, engineer Uche Okerefo, gave this hint at the last monthly crude oil delivery and refinery performance review meeting at the DPR headquarters in Lagos. The original equipment manufacturers are being contacted and right now they are being mobilized to handle the turnaround by themselves and this has not been so. So this is a very important development and we are happy about it. In a move likely to affect the flow of the notable $3.8 billion Egina FPSO project, Global Resources Management Limited, a subsidiary of Lagos Deep Offshore Logistics, Laval, has banished Samsung Heavy Industries from its free zone in Lagos over allegations of expired operating license. Now, the Xi MCI dockyard operated by Samsung Heavy Industries is a 70% to 30% joint venture between it and Lado. Samsung owns the larger share, but in the meantime, an international offshore facility, Mooring Company, has completed its position, keeping role for Egina FPSO, which is now safely moored offshore Nigeria. A team of position keeping masses on board the vessel oversaw the Installation of a total of 16 mooring lines, that's a 4x4 in phases, completing the first eight on schedule. Egina is located some 130 kilometers of Nigeria's coast at water levels of about 4,921 feet and has an estimated storage capacity of approximately 2.3 million barrels of oil. <music> Geologists and geophysicists say Nigeria is more endowed with natural gas than crude oil. Now, but the gas sulfur discovered is associated gas, that is, gas discovered while producing crude oil. No efforts, I repeat, no much conscious efforts have been made to explore and produce natural gas. That explains why the discovered gas is being flared. Today, natural gas is gradually assuming its well-deserved position in the Nigerian economy after more than 50 years of its discovery. Now, but is this subsector monitored and regulated adequately? That's a big question. Now, let's sit back and watch this special report, and thereafter, when we come back, we'll draw our conclusions. Nigeria, from all indications, is endowed with more natural gas reserves than crude oil. Her proven gas reserves today is put at 199 trillion cubic feet, making it the world's ninth largest reserves and the number one in Africa. The life index of this reserve stands at 75 years. However, geologists believe that the undiscovered potentials of Nigeria's natural gas are even higher. The United States Geological Survey in a report estimates Nigeria's gas reserve potentials to be well over 600 trillion cubic feet. If proven, this will rank the nation's gas reserve potentials amongst the world's top three. Regrettably, for more than 50 years, a significant quantity of this valuable asset has been flared 
as associated gas. However, some efforts are now being made by the government and its agencies to turn around this situation and even prospect for more natural non-associated gas from other basins. Among the efforts by the government to encourage oil companies to do more in the exploration of gas are incentives and even enacting of appropriate bills and laws by the parliament. All these are aimed at maximizing the huge potentials of Nigeria's natural gas reserve. It will be recalled that on the 13th of February 2008, the federal government approved the gas master plan. This plan is part of the grand plan to make Nigeria a major player in the international gas market. It is also to expand the domestic market. In the plan are three key strategies. First, stimulation of the multiplier effects of gas in the domestic economy and positioning Nigeria competitively in the high-value export market. Two, guaranteeing the long-term energy security of the country and third, making available gas for industry and power. Prior to the gas master plan policy, efforts were made to convert the fled natural gas into a valuable resource through execution of various projects. There is one point that is important uh, in the development of gas, which is gas is not developed like oil. Oil, you can produce it and store it. Then thereafter, you transport it to the market, whether in the spot market or any other market. But gas, gas is not. Gas, when you produce it, you are meant to use it immediately. Since the conception of the gas master plan, the gas subsector has had a good run. The last eight years have witnessed more operating companies putting in place different natural gas monetization projects. The Nigeria Liquefied Natural Gas NLNG plant at Boni River State, which commenced operation in 1999 with two trains, has increased to six trains with the seventh about to start. The petrochemical plant at Eleme, the fertilizer plant at Eleme, and the Trans-West Africa gas pipeline designed to supply gas to Bene, Togo, and Ghana. The project has since been completed. Others are the numerous power plants and the aluminium smelting plant at Ikorabasi. It should be noted that the gas master plan is a tool to implement the gas policy of the government. The national gas policy was approved by the Federal Executive Council in June 2017. The main thrust of the policy is to set the goals, strategies and an implementation plan for establishing a framework aimed at driving the institutional, legal, regulatory and commercial reforms necessary for attracting investment into the gas sector. Today, significant reduction in the volume of gas being fled has been achieved. From 75% of produced gas in the year 2000 to about 10% currently. There are also many other projects directed towards the utilization of Nigeria's abundant natural gas. They range from secondary to tertiary gas distribution network in the country meant for industrial and domestic gas supply. In view of government's drive to achieving flare-out by 2020, the Nigeria Gas Flare Commercialization Program NGFCP was launched by the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources on December 13, 2016. The program is aimed at developing a different approach to eliminate routine gas flaring that producing companies have failed to eliminate by assigning flare sites with ongoing routine flare to private entities to commercialize the gas on behalf of the federal government. To this end, the Flare Gas Prevention of Waste and Pollution Regulations 2018 
was signed by the Minister of Petroleum Resources on 9th of July 2018. The NGFCP will ensure government derived value from the natural gas that is currently flared by the companies since the third party companies shall create job opportunities for host communities in the Niger Delta. Value addition will also be realized through products derived from the flare gas. For example, LPG, CNG, power generation and diesel. In addition to this, government will also earn some revenue from the sales of gas at flare sites to third parties and from carbon credit earned due to flare elimination. The ultimate objectives of all these gas projects, programs and policy initiatives are to grow the gas reserves to 200 trillion cubic feet by year 2020 and thereby meet her domestic and export needs. No doubt there has been an established entity to monitor and regulate all the players and activities in this critical subsector of the industry. The Department of Petroleum Resources is that establishment. Within the department is a division carved out to execute that role, and that is the Gas Monitoring and Regulation Division or GMR. The job specifications of the division are regulating and monitoring gas exploration, development and production, supervising gas reserves audit, reserves inventorization and ensuring prudent gas reservoir management. Other functions of the division are monitoring gas projects, gas supplies, distribution and exports. Also, it monitors and enforces domestic gas obligations, supply and distribution. This ensures that gas operations are done in line with best practices while protecting the environment against pollution. The Gas Monitoring and Regulation Division has as part of its mandate the development of strategies that will stimulate gas exploration expected to increase the country's gas reserve base and unveil gas potentials of all sedimentary basins. The division also grants permits, approvals and waivers online with applicable laws and regulations and facilitates the development of the gas value chain in order to grow the country's economy. The monitoring of natural gas processing plants, turnaround maintenance, TAM and gas facility modification projects are all under the purviews of the division. The division also regulates and monitors gas facilities, gas export and imports, as well as gas processing plants. Given the enormous responsibilities of this division, its operations are further divided into three branches, gas exploration and production, under the leadership of an assistant director, Mr. Godde Ine. The gas exploration and production branch, amongst others, monitors gas exploration, development, production, utilization and flare down. It monitors and ensures gas E and P operations are carried out in line with best field practices. It processes gas exploration, appraisal and development, well drilling and workover proposals. The branch basically is what we call the upstream sector of the gas division. So we are charged with the responsibility of finding and producing the gas, the natural gas resources, from the subsurface to the surface using a adequate technology, the exact laws, and the people, because uh, there are people that do the job. Gas Operations Brand is headed by Mr. Idris Abubakar, an assistant director. The mandate of the branch focuses on enforcing compliance of gas infrastructures to approved codes and standards, processing and granting licenses, permits, renewals for gas facilities and 
distribution infrastructures, monitoring and granting permits for gas-related exports imports, and enforcing legislative and policy framework. We have the Nigeria LNG, which does a lot of export of the processed gas. We also have the Nigeria LNG doing import into our domestic gas. So when I say infrastructure, we are talking about how are those infrastructures being kept, being run? Are they in line with the extant laws? Okay. We are also talking about like the gas facilities, the gas processing facilities themselves, you know, that are supposed to also harness this gas. So by extant laws, are they doing what they are supposed to do? The routine maintenance, like a facility has been running for this particular, you know, uh, period, this particular time. Is it due for maintenance? And if it is due for maintenance, is the maintenance being done? And if the maintenance is being done, is the maintenance being done the way it's supposed to be done? The Domestic Gas Obligation and Distribution Branch is also supervised by an Assistant Director, Mr. Abel Nsa. The branch determines the domestic gas requirement of the nation and allocates domestic gas supply obligation to oil and gas operating companies. First of all, let's talk about the domestic supply obligation in itself. Domestic gas supply obligation comes with various parameters, just as I told you, directly from the whole value chain, the upstream sector. You go to an upstream player and say, what do you have? That is, what's your gas reserves? What's your cap infrastructure capability? Because one of the challenges has also been the infrastructure. Okay. Now, what do you utilize? What do you flare? And what's your reserve? What's the national requirement, per se? Also tied to the power plant predominantly. So all that, you have a stakeholders meeting. And if you recall, 2007, there's a law which came out in 2008, which is the Domestic Supply and Pricing Regulation 2008 actually takes the whole issue of gas into perspective. Finally, gas operation, LPG, CNG branch under Mr. Zayad Tamburi Yabo. The activities of our branch is to monitor and regulate uh, all activities in the industry that uh, concern uh, liquefied natural gas and compressed natural gas, that's LPG and CNG. LPG is uh, more commonly known as uh, cooking gas, but of course it has uh, more wider application than just cooking. Whoa, that's an awesome report there for you. That has been a pretty much detailed one on the country's natural gas reserve, and I'm sure you've been enlightened. Let's go over to that segment where you hear directly from the man at the helms of the division. Okay, today we have with us Mr. Lusoya Bajomo, is the Deputy Director of Gas Monitoring and Regulation Unit of the Department of Petroleum Resources. Mr. Bajomo, you are most welcome to this segment of the program. Thank you. We want just to find out from you when we talk about gas division in the oil and gas industry, and you are the head here. What role do you play in this in this division? Under the Department uh, of Petroleum Resources is the technical arm of the Federal Ministry of Petroleum Resources. And uh, the department is charged with the responsibility to regulate uh, the activities and the oil industry uh, to ensure um, optimized government intake and to also implement government policies uh, as regards to gas matters. And to do this, um, the role of uh, gas is to ensure that uh, we monitor gas activities in Nigeria in compliance with the laws and regulations that have been set up, and then to ensure that the conservation of the rich resources of this country and to also make sure that all the activities that are being carried out are carried out in compliance with best global practices. 
when we talk of gas, we know that in this country we hear that we have more gas than we even have the crude oil. To what extent have we developed and tapped into this rich resource of our country? Nigeria is the ninth in the world and then is the first in Africa. And I think the best thing that can happen to Nigeria is to develop the gas rich resources that they have. And that is why the government, in its own wisdom, uh, launched uh, this uh, roadmap that was in 2016, uh, which we call Seven Big Wins. And uh, in the uh, number three of the Seven Big Wins, that is where the gas comes in. And it said, it is high time we revolutionize gas development in the country. Nigeria wants to grow the economy from oil export uh, country to oil and gas export country. So that is why that uh, the seven big wings was launched. I mean, and then it has also started and that the most of the gas that really be, being flared now the government believed that we are not supposed to wait the resources. And that is why I also launched a program called Nigerian Gas Flare Commercialization. They want to, they want to turn the gas being flare to money. Talking about this gas flare, I know a deadline was set to was stopping gas flaring in the country. To what extent have we gone towards achieving that deadline? It has started because a lot of projects are ongoing now to reduce gas flaring. Where we are now, uh, the gas flaring has reduced up to 11%. I know the, this deadline, we have, it, we have moved it from time to time to time. Now we are looking at 2020. What is guaranteed that 2020 will be 2020? 2020 will be 2020. Because I know that a lot of, like I said, 11% of the gas, I mean, has been flared now. And more, yeah, more pro, the projects, one, all the projects, I can't be mentioning all projects now, but more projects that we curtail the flaring of gas in this country are in the process now. In fact, I can tell you that there are some, uh, uh, companies that are ready, already, that by the time we start the, the commercialization program, that are ready to take all this flare gas, eh? and that will start by this, uh, by this year. So what you talked about now, is it part of the roadmap for the gas industry for yes, the country? Uh, okay, what is, what is that roadmap supposed to achieve? We want to uh, ensure the growth of the industry by the usage of gas and the domestic domestic usage of gas and this will promote the uh, sustainable development if there is constant uh, electricity we see that a lot of the industry that have been packed up using gas will sweep up well, what would you say is the greatest challenge in the, um, in the exploration and utilization of this abundant resource we have in this country, gas? In the exploration, um, we don't really have challenge because we have enough, there are so many uh, reserves that has not been actually produce now. But in terms of utilization, and that's what we are, we have a uh, challenge. And the challenge is not modern infrastructure. Like I, uh, but considering the level of vandalism and, uh, on, on our various pipelines, would you say that pipeline is still the best option to transport gas to these various places? Anywhere in the whole world, pipeline is still the best because you cannot store gas. Gas is produced where it will be used. And 
in as much as you want to revolutionize the the gas development of gas the only eh, the only way out is through the pipeline thank you so much mr bojoma for your insight into your unit that is the gas and monitoring the gas monitoring and regulation regulation unit of the dpl thank you so much for your time sir. thank you man well so soon it's a wrap on today's show well, I hope you've enjoyed today's topic on natural gas. I've learned a thing or two on that as well. But I'll be coming back again next week. Keep a date with me. Bye-bye.